basking in the Arizona sunshine, the fresh air, the desert environment. This episode of The Traveling Golfer comes to you from the Tucson area, our base of operations, the Casino del Sol Resort. And this is an amazing property on the Pascoyaki Tribe Nation, which has its own golf course here too. Suelo, one of four golf courses we're gonna bring you from this exciting edition of The Traveling Golfer. It's not limited edition, not cast conditioned, not exclusive or extra, nor is it private reserve. It is, however, a rare breed, American lager from an American owned, family operated brewery. Since 1829, we kept it so simple, we're still in fashion. Fancy that. America's oldest brewery, Yingling. Randolph North, part of the City of Tucson Municipal Golf Complex, built in 1924. And it stood the test of time. Reason? Well, it's a beautiful mountain setting. Even though many of the older courses in Arizona were flat desert courses, you'll see that this is quite different. The elevation changes, the mountain setting, all make it something special in the state of Arizona. And the variety of holes and their challenges is one reason the LPGA staged an event here for many years. They're fortunate enough to have 36 holes at the Tucson Municipal Golf Facility. Complementing the Randolph course is the Del Uric course. There's plenty of elevation changes and the mounding which defines the routing of the course is pronounced, especially as you approach the greens. There are beautiful water features throughout, and as is the case at a municipal layout, walking is always allowed. Again, a municipal layout, but don't let the term muni fool you. This is one of the finest municipal golf courses you could ever play. The Weston La Paloma Country Club and Resort has been a staple of the Tucson golf scene since 1986. Club, the spa, nine, nine and nine wedged into the mountains, the Santa Catalina Mountains, all along the foothills. And believe me, there are three different challenges here, the hill, the ridge, and the canyon, especially the canyon really a rugged piece of property, typical of many Jack Nicklaus designed golf courses. The greens can have a lot of challenge, a lot of severe slopes, and behind the greens and around it, there's a lot of mounding, which may bounce a few of your balls back into good position, but if it doesn't, you'll be chipping from some different lies that'll make it a very tough task to make that par. Believe me, it is an eye-popping, exhilarating ride through the foothills. In between the saguaro cactus, they're even tough. So last thought when you come out to play this great golf course, T-E-C, take enough club. You don't wanna be in those barrancas and in the ditches in front of the greens or around to the sides. It'll be a long day for you. The rest of the time is pure enjoyment. In my book, the big red A in the background stands for awesome because that's the only way to describe this golf course built by Robert Trent Jones II, originally named the Raven at Sabino Springs, now Arizona National after a wonderful renovation that has made this course the ultimate signature of desert golf. The slope here at Arizona National is high for good reason. There's a lot of visual intimidation out on this golf course. You need to commit to shots, stay in the corridors, don't look at all of the distractions and cactus and rocks and boulders on the sides. Look at those fairways and hit them. They're green, they're wide, they're beautiful. Plenty of room to play this golf course. Nota Begay is no longer on the PGA Tour, 
but he's making a name for himself as a broadcaster and a golf architect. When the Casino del Sol decided to include a golf course as an addition to the property, Nota Begay jumped at the chance to design a layout that included not only his expertise in golf, but also his heritage as a Native American. Well, it's special because I think that it incorporates all the things that I th are important to me, which is it serves in the community, incorporates the cultural identity, the history and tradition of the Pascayaki people, and in the name Sewailo. You start in the lush, flowery, green areas, you return to the desert, and then work your way back into the lush, flowery, green areas. And the water speaks for itself. It's just the whole thing comes full circle, talks about the circle of life and just how things come and go because the land was so flat. The most challenging thing was to be able to do that, create variety, create unique looking holes that would stay in a person's memory. I think that there's going to be six or seven holes that every player will walk off remembering knowing that those were holes that made an impression on them. I think that you can do a lot with angling hazards, angling bunkers, proper positioning of bunkers to challenge the elite level golfer and then you just minimize those challenges as you work your way back. There were some hard holes but there were also some easy holes where I think every level of golfer will be able to say I had a chance to make a couple birdies today. They truly got a chance to experience just a little bit more than a round of golf. They're getting an introduction into sort of the cultural traditions of the Pasquayaki people and hopefully walk away with a little bit of a better understanding of Native American people. What if we told you that you could get more distance by increasing loft? What if the pros were increasing their loft a full degree or more mid-season? That's what happens when we move weight low and forward. Are you ready for more distance? SLDR from TaylorMade. Tucson's a community of about a million people when you take a look at the metro area. And there's so much to be able to see and do here as well. It's certainly outdoor adventure recreation. People come here uh, for the desert. They love to be able to, to hike and cycle, really to be active. And, and we talk about this whole concept of free yourself. And that's what people come here to do. We get visitors from throughout the world. Uh, our top feeder markets are some of the largest cities in the United States. So people come here really to escape, rejuvenate, and Tucson offers that opportunity in a variety of ways. A lot of people uh, think of Tucson in terms of the Old West, and so when they come here, they're going to go to places like Old Tucson, for example. Uh, Tombstone uh, is just about an hour, hour and a half away. Uh, so that chance to really kind of see and experience that 1880s Old West culture, that's something that people really enjoy. I think when uh, folks come here today, uh, you know, they're really looking at uh, things like golf. We've got some destination spas that people come from throughout the world to, uh, to visit. And then they'll also go to places like the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum. It's one of the top ranked uh, combined botanical gardens and zoos in the world. Uh, and just being able to get out and see even some of the, uh, the past here as well in terms of the Pima Air and Space Museum. The plane that flew the hostages back from Iran uh, is at the Pima Air and Space Museum along with many other aircraft. Uh, we certainly have the Titan Missile Museum too from the Cold War era so you can actually see what one of those missiles looks like. So a lot to see and do but uh, you know from our standpoint as well golf is really a, a preeminent attraction. It's really a nice mix so if you know, people are coming here on a budget uh, we have some of the top municipal courses that you're going to find in any area here as well through Tucson City Golf. Uh, but we also have a lot of really strong daily fee courses. Places like uh, Golf Club at Dove Mountain, that's where the Accenture match play uh, was played. Omni Tucson National, a really nice resort course. And we now have a Champions Tour event that will be played there as well. We have the newest course in Arizona, Sewailo Golf Club. Really a, a very nice course, it's starting to mature. Sewailo means uh, flower. When you get out there, you certainly see that uh, the flowers and, and other kind of flora and fauna abound out there as well. So uh, really a nice mixture when it comes to golf. Tucson's really very easy uh, to, uh, to explore. When you get here, there's, uh, there's so much to be able to see and do. Uh, the mountains are really a preeminent factor. And then also just taking a look at some of that desert. So many hiking trails. If you want to get out and really explore an area that's very different than maybe where you're from, flora, the fauna, and the desert, it's really a great place to visit. Indian casinos and resorts across the country have been developed in a number of different ways. 
Casino del Sol Resort was developed by the Pasquayaki tribe in a number of stages. Going back to the late 1970s is when the tribe was first recognized. So following that, you'll, you'll know that across the country, uh, bingo started showing up on tribal lands across the country. And this was one of the first tribes in the state of Arizona to add bingo. And the original location for bingo is about a mile away from here. And uh, it doesn't look quite like the resort does. So following that, uh, we built a new casino. We added an outdoor amphitheater, over 5,000 seats. And three years ago, we uh, were able to put up our brand new hotel tower, including all the conference facilities that we have, the parking, and this beautiful pool area that we have behind me here. And then of course, we added golf course, spa, a lot of other facilities as well. So we're a casino with a resort, not a resort with a casino. So we always have our baseline that we start, and we wanted to put something together that they would they would be appreciative of and they and would appeal to them. So that's our starting point. But then you look at what's going on in Tucson and there hasn't been anything new built outside of us in a very long time. So we felt like we could raise the bar in Tucson and give us something that would compete with the resorts in Phoenix and not have to, a customer doesn't have to pay as much money. Whether they want a $5 burger in Moby's or a $30 steak in PY, we have to make sure that we give them good value and great quality, and that's where our focus is. The technology that you'll find here is on par. I would say we're ahead of 90% of the casinos in Las Vegas. We have to be, because our customers see us 10, 11 times a month. They demand the newest and the greatest, and that's how we differentiate ourselves from other casinos in a local market, is by giving them the best games, the best technology, being reactive to what it is that they're looking for, and then we teach them how to play these games, and then they go to Las Vegas looking for them, and oftentimes not finding them, because they haven't put the same amount of money into the, the games that we have. The most difficult part of the Traveling Golfer Show is when it's time to say goodbye. In this case, we say adios. From the Tucson area, what a great golf trip, a spectacular Casino del Sol Resort, four amazing golf courses with splendid views of the mountains and the desert, and in addition, a cultural experience that's hard to find anywhere else in America. All of this put together brings a bit of a different Arizona golf experience to people who like to travel and play golf. Nobody likes it more than the traveling golfer. Thanks for being with us in Tucson. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua the leader in modern golf apparel.